Hey everybody, it's Jamie Jan, non-toxic farm mom, coming to you from my back porch and my little farm to talk about loofah. Hey, thanks for joining me on my porch. I wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite things to grow. Um, several years ago, when we had first um, started our little farm, I came across loofah. Now, be honest, how many of you think that loofah is something that comes from the bottom of the sea? Raise your hand. All right, so um, I did. Like, you know, when you stroll through the bath aisle at any store, Target, Walmart, any store, right? And you see all the bath scrubs and you see all the fun stuff, there's always loofah, sometimes on a stick, sometimes on a string, sometimes just a sponge. Um, and I really didn't know what it was. And I was, um, I don't even remember how I was introduced to it. Maybe at a farm gathering um, with my small friends, I was introduced to it and realized, oh my goodness, it's something I can grow on my little farm. And then we can always have cool, um, natural sponges to scrub ourselves with. And since I made my own homemade soap, I was like, this is so super cool. Sorry, my glasses are fogging up because Right before this video, we gave the dogs a bath and then it decided to pour down rain outside while we were giving the dogs a bath. Okay, back to loofah. All right, so, like seriously, if I hold this up, like, it's kind of ugly, right? This is when loofah is ready, okay? So, loofah looks like a big cucumber growing on a vine. It's exactly what it looks like. Big, beautiful, gorgeous flowers. I'll show you those in a little bit. But this is the final product. It is a very slow growing plant, which we're gonna talk about too, okay? So if you live someplace where it's super cold, you're gonna have to start these inside because they have a really long season. And as soon as it frosts, they're done. You have to harvest them before they frost. But this is what they look like when they're ready to be picked and I was so excited to come home from a weekend trip with my college girl and find that I had one ready so I'm gonna show you what the seeds look like and then I'm gonna show you how this actually becomes a loofah something that you can scrub yourself okay with. so here are loofah seeds they are black um, and they come right out of the inside of this um, after it's dried oh hello this is this is Kit Kat one of the farm cats that is spoiled rotten. Oh, there's his brother. Look, meet the farm cats, Kit Kat and Gizmo. They're obviously enjoying their Sunday afternoon nap on the little farm. So these are actually loofah seeds that I harvested in 2014. And these are ones I planted this year. I'm gonna be completely honest. I started them on um, inside, moved them to the front porch. They were big and beautiful. Moved them to the spot that I wanted them to vine in the garden and oh my goodness you guys they didn't do anything so i didn't think i was going to get any loofah and then a few weeks ago i noticed these big bright flowers and oh he wants to play with it are you gonna play with the loofah he's gonna play with the oh it was too much effort okay so anyway i noticed that we had these loofah growing in the garden. So we have, I think about five of them. So somehow they managed to, to make it. And I really didn't notice until most of the rest of the garden was done for the, for the season. All right. Say goodbye, Kit Kat. Say, we'll be back. We're going to tell you a little bit more about loofah. Okay. The rain stopped. So before I show you more about what to do with the loofah, um, wow, the sun is super bright. With the loofah, once it's dried and ready, I wanted to bring you out to the garden so you can see what the loofah looks like on okay. the vine. So here we are. So you can see these are loofah flowers, just like other big yellow flowers from the squash plant. Oh, these little guys got wet. My little pollinators look like they got wet in the rain, so hopefully they'll dry out. Anyway, this is a loofah flower, and here is a loofah. Usually they need... To, it's better to let them vine on something. Okay, so they get super big, but if you pick them up, they are lightweight and you can tell that they are more hollow because they're fibrous on the inside. So I have read and researched that um, 
some people, I think especially in other countries, will harvest and eat loofah just like a squash, but you need to do so when it's like really young and small, not when it gets like big. So more like pickling cucumber size, okay? So this is a loofah. And here is a small loofah that I found hiding. So it climbed up one of the tomato, old tomato um, cages that I have. So this would probably be in more of a size that you could harvest and eat, but it's not the consistency of like a squash. Like if you feel it, you can feel it's kind of mushy. So I'll be honest and say they smell different. So it's not been anything I've ever been interested in eating, but here's how the loofah grows. So I'll be honest, this small guy right here, I don't know if he'll make it to um, be harvested before it actually gets too cold and frost. I mean, we live in South Carolina, so there's a chance he could grow. It's only September, um, but I'm not sure he'll get quite that big. This guy will start drying out, and this one should be um, start to turn color, lose the little blossom, and we should probably be able to get this harvested way before it frosts, since it probably won't frost until early okay, November. So as you can see, the morning glories have taken over my silky coop. They think it's cool because it provides them some shade, but what's crazy is I found a loofah growing clear over here. I don't know if you can see it hiding down there, but there is another loofah down there in the, um, in the vines. And I'm going to guess now that this end of the garden is pretty much done and overtaken by morning glory, that I probably have some more hiding in there because I see some big yellow um, loofah flowers. So somehow, the loofah plants that I didn't think made it, made it, and I have a feeling I have a lot more hiding in there, but I need to get in there and clean out all the weeds and the morning glory vines and see what's in there. All right, we were walking back up to the house so I can show you some more about loofah from the back porch, but a couple of free rangers wanted to say hello. Life on the farm is never boring. I'm not exactly sure why that hen back there has flown the coop, but she seems to be enjoying her free range time, so I'm going to let her. Oh, he says hello. Okay, so back to the porch, back to talking about this loofah. I just wanted you to see what they look like when they're growing in the garden as to po opposed to when they're ready to harvest. So once it starts turning brown and you can, it's like you can hear it kind of crackly, the skin is loose, you can see it's dry and it will start to peel. So that's all you do is you find a spot at the top and let me see if I can do it. You just peel it, all right? Now, is that what you thought it was gonna look like on the inside, right? It looks like a squash when it's growing and it's nice and green, but look, when you start to peel it like a banana, look, it looks like a loofah sponge. Can you see? All right, so what I do is I peel it all off and then I let it dry. Um, probably inside my house so it doesn't like gather dust and and yucky stuff oh this is so much fun okay so look this is a loofah right and then once it's dry I can take a bread knife and I can slice it into the sponge sizes that I want um, one time I even made a batch of soap and I put the little segment out and I poured the soap into it so the soap was inside the loofah when I was using it. But if you look inside, can you see the black seeds? So look, these are my seeds for next year's harvest and or next year's planting season and harvest. And so once it's dry, they will just shake out. It becomes like a little maraca. You can hear them in here. So once it's dry and it's ready to go, I shake out my seeds and I slice it. Um, some people um, grow these and will sell them or use them for gifts and they might bleach it. Like you can see how this is a little brown on the, oh, sorry, my camera's at that end, brown. Um, some people will bleach them. I do not use bleach. Um, remember, I'm non-toxic farm mom, so we do not use bleach in our house. Um, and I will be honest and say, I haven't grown these for about five years because we haven't had a need to. They last for a really long time. And so this year, 
I will probably try some of my non-toxic whitener if I choose to gift these. And they're so much fun to um, gift with some of your favorite non-toxic soap products and bundle them up at Christmas time. Make your own fun little teacher's gift. So it looks like, I don't know. I mean, I know that I have two more that I'm going to be able to harvest. I mean, I wasn't planning on this because I didn't think that this harvest actually worked. Um, so I think I'm going to have at least two more, but once I get in there, I might have more. But look how many loofah you can get out of one loofah, loofah plant, right? So I may have a lot of Christmas gifts and I love giving gifts straight from the farm. So someday I may venture into selling these pre-bundled with some of my favorite soap products. But right now I like to gift things that are safe and non-toxic that we grow right here on our little bit of faith farm. So that's a little bit about loofah. So if you didn't know where loofah came from, I hope that you really enjoyed this video. I also hope that you will click subscribe below and start following along with my new non-toxic farm mom journey. Um, I love having you all here. Just learning and growing with me and learning ways that you can be non-toxic in your own home or your own little farm. Thanks for joining me. Bye!